The details that most people don't notice. Those are the ones that mean the most to us. And I'll bet you if you said that expression to any horseman in any discipline, whether they uh, are some ro uh, rodeo cowboy or a uh, ranch cowboy, they race horses, they have uh, dressage horses, pulling horses, hitch horses, farm horses, whatever. Everybody would agree. I think every bit of horsemanship starts on that. The details that most people don't notice are the ones that matter the most to us. And if you want to improve your horsemanship, it's that simple. All the little things, all the tiny little things we do, all the mundane little details done to perfection are what separate the best horsemen from the rest of us. And uh, I don't think that's a big shock to anybody, but th there are not a lot of uh, special skills that, that you're just born with. I mean, it, it's nice to be born with a nice presence and a little authority or uh, the ability to really focus and be in the moment when you're working with horses. But if you do all the fundamental things, all the little tiny things, and you do them to perfection, you'll go a long ways. You'll be at the top of this game. I can think of uh, years back, a friend of ours was just setting the world on fire with horses, pulling horses. And... Uh, I said to a buddy of ours, I said, what makes him so good? Why is he so better than the rest of us? And he said, one thing, he can work all day in a bushel basket. And I thought, you know, why, why hit it with an insult? And then the more I thought of it, the more I thought, you know, that's true. A guy that can work all day in a bushel basket and doesn't get bored. And, you know, if, if he doesn't like the way these hames are fitting, can take a half hour and, and move the top strap, the bottom strap, tighten, loosen, adjust this draft up and down, get them fitting perfect. A guy that can take a half hour, two hours and do that, he's going to be a great horseman when you, when you do the fundamental things to perfection. Uh, John Wooden, he was the coach of the UCLA Bruins basketball program for years. One of the best coaches in all of sports. And he had whoop, all the best athletes, prima donna kind of guys. And uh, first day of practice, he taught you how to put your socks on and then your shoes on. And they didn't even touch a basketball. That's all they worked on is how to put your socks and shoes on. And the guys thought, how stupid is this? But... Later in the year, some of these other teams, the guys that are sitting on the bench and calling themselves out of the game, they got blisters hurting. UCLA guys didn't. I mean, that might seem stupid. It might seem extreme. Get over. But that's an attention to detail kind of thing that pays off. Right here, I'm doing a bit of an attention to detail. I knew something wasn't fitting up there on his back straps. That's why this Cooper wasn't fitting, right? That, and he's just not cooperating, but. And, and so I, I looked into things and figured out where it's fitting wrong. Uh, I'm not saying I'm in any of those leagues of being the top, but I do know how to get there. If I wanted to be a top horseman, which I do actually, but I, it's a matter of dedication. If I wanted to fully dedicate myself to being a top horseman, I know damn well that's where I start. I don't need to go learn a bunch of tricks. I need to go execute the things we all know. How to fit the collar better. How to harness more comfortable. It's no coincidence that when you go watch a top competitor 
And I talk about competition a lot. And for one reason, that's where we see people. You know, your average guy can be an absolute top horseman on the farm, plowing, dragging, you know, doing hay and equipment, doing, uh, doing farm work with a team of horses. He can be a top teamster. Uh, the reason I don't talk about that guy, we don't see him. We don't, he's not visible. You, you go to a competition, you go watch a race up to Batavia Downs or Buffalo Downs or the Meadowlands or somewhere, and those guys are visible, and you know the good teamsters. You know, when, when somebody's out, when somebody's out in Wyoming on a ranch, rounding up cattle, they could be a top hand, an absolute top horseman. Who the hell knows the difference? It's kind of a solo pursuit. And there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, that's beautiful. And that's, that's this at its purest form. But we don't see it. And, and that's probably why I don't use those examples as often as I do competitive situations. Uh, because we all see a competition. You can all go on YouTube and watch a horse pull. You can all... Go to your county fair and watch a horse pull. Uh, you know, we can all go to Michigan and watch the six horse hitches or out to a ship or something like that. Uh, I'll tell you a couple other things that separate people. And this, one of these comes from my brother, Mike. He was a sales manager, had a lot of people under him. And when he'd get a new salesman, this, this advice is broader than ju just horses. This will fit you all over, not just as a horseman. When he'd get a new salesperson, he'd tell them to pay attention to what your good habits are. Maybe you're a safe driver. Maybe your good habit is you're a sharp dresser. That's not me. <laughs> Maybe your good habit is you're a uh, You know, you're a morning person. You're good in the mornings. Whatever those good habits are, guard those good habits. We all have bad habits, you know. Some of us aren't good in the morning. Some of us aren't safe dressers. Some of us eat terribly. Whatever our bad habits are. Well, they're one thing, and we're all aware of them, and we have to work on them. But take those good habits, the ones that you're good at, and guard them. Don't let them slip. Make sure you're just as good a driver if that's your good habit. Make sure you're just as good a driver behind the wheel a year from today as you are today. Make sure you're just as good at getting up in the morning if that's your good habit. And I think that's tremendous advice. And as horsemen, and I only speak with a draft horse background, but <coughs> find what your good habits are. You know, maybe you're an excellent caretaker, and some people are. You know, your horses always have their dapples out, and they, they're brushed off and shiny and looking good. Uh, maybe that's your thing. Guard that. Make sure you're just as good at that two years from today as you are today. Ten years from today as you are today. Don't let those good habits slip. And that's not to discount... Your bad habits. Uh, maybe your bad habit is you're loud around horses. You yell. You you holler. You you, you rile them up more than you need to. Uh, well, of course you work on that. But in the process of working on that, don't forget the things you are good at. And uh, I think that'll help you a lot as a teamster. Something else that helps. Uh, a little bit of a hippy dippy thing here, but I believe it in a lot. Being in the moment. You know, when you uh, when you're buckling this line, you're buckling this line. You're in the moment, just like that horse is. This horse wonders what's going on around him. Why is his brother being stupid and yanking on his mouth? Be buckling this line. Be paying attention to 
both horses. That there's no twist in that line. Pay attention if this horse looks uncomfortable or something. Uh, don't be thinking about the score of last night's game or the fight you got in with your wife or, you know, you got to do so much or the bills you got to pay or any of that. Woo. Be in the moment every step of the way from the littlest detail, the detail that nobody notices that are the most important ones, you know, threading these lines right, having a good set of lines that are set up right. From every little detail, be in the moment, especially during the actual training, when you're actually training a horse, when you're, um, when you're teaching it, when you're working one-on-one -on -one with a horse, like I was sacking that dude out the other day, or uh, when you're driving a team, especially in a tense situation, more than ever, that's when you need to be in the moment. But... When you're with these guys, there's never a time not to be in the moment. Because they are. We've got to change our stalls around. Talking about uh, attention to detail. We don't want him. <laughs> because of our situation, we got this guy in the tie stall, which I don't mind at all. But maybe we got to put a little padding on the bridge of his uh, uh, halter. He doesn't have a sore or anything, but it's working his hair backwards, and we got to get over that. You need work. That's all you need. Yeah, we got a situation. This guy is just like this every minute of the day. You see how he's lurching toward the camera and chomping and being stupid. When he's in a tie stall, it takes him about two minutes to put his head down, find something to rub on, and pull his halter off and then he's loose and then he spills Nick's tools all over the place and that's not good when he's in a box stall he figures out how to unlatch any latch he's just a just a pain like that to be honest with you <laughs> so anyway this guy ends up in a in a box stall and this guy ends up in a tie stall for various reasons one a tie stall is good for him it teaches him to get over uh, teaches him a lot of ground manners but I guess I've been thinking about that lately. You know, what makes a horseman and what makes a guy not good at horses. And, uh, you know, a good horseman has presence. You know, besides being in the moment. Are you in a moment, Nick? Yeah. You looking at the phone? <laughs> besides being in the moment, knowing exactly what's going on with that horse and having a feel for things. Um, having some presence matters <laughs> uh carrying a little authority about you some people do that more than others it, it's hard to fake it if you don't but you know that does help you be a horseman uh having a good demeanor a good calm demeanor that doesn't scare everybody that's a part of being a horseman uh overcoming emotions and that's again uh, that could probably be lumped in with uh, uh, being in the moment. This guy will stir emotions in you because he's such a piss pot. He's always into something. Don't take it personal. He's not trying to give you a bad day. He's not trying to make you mad. He's just doing this stuff because he's just a doofus horse. <laughs> um, and, and overcome that. Overcome that anger or... You know, even on the other side, don't don't ride the highs too high. Maybe I'm working Ziggy, and uh, he's coming excellent, and I let my guard down. You know, I'm not in the moment because I'm just so proud of how well he's doing, and I'm thinking about that, and all of a sudden, you know, who knows what happens, and he steps over the tongue or something silly like that. Um, you know, so just kind of a good horseman keeps their emotions in check while they're in the moment. You know, I don't know how much specific details I'm talking about when I say the attention to details is what matters the most. Where does it end? But, you know, it starts with, and I always tell people this. I can tell you where it starts. I don't know where it ends, but it starts with you, the teamster, 
getting a handle on yourself and being honest with yourself as to what your own tendencies are. And from there, you want to look at the horse and you want to find a comfortable horse. Uh, a horse that just looks comfortable, that everything's going well for them. A horse that's having a good day. Uh, a horse that's in good condition on the body score count. Uh, a horse that uh, looks, you know, obviously no injuries, no, no swellings, no cuts. Um, good body language, you know. He's giving us good body language right now, or he was before I said it. Uh, good posture. You know, oh, just a horse that looks comfortable and happy doing their job. And any step away from that you get... Uh, you gotta you gotta take a step backwards and figure out why they're no longer comfortable. Maybe they need checked up. A lot of horses put their heads down, and now you're not driving them. You're, they're awful heavy on the lines. Now their throat here and windpipe is cutting off on this collar, and they tend to stumble along, kind of like a. And they kind of tend to stumble along like a horse with a, a short pasterns there. They're short and choppy in their strides. They don't take a good stride when their head's down low. They're not pushing off the rear end like a horse should. That is one of the millions of things you need to pay attention to, the details. You know, go back to the John Wooden thing, putting your socks on and shoes, and where he'd spend a whole practice session coaching, you know, college men how to put their socks and shoes on. That sounds ridiculous, but what if I didn't do a good job? What if I spent, and I do, I'll spend hours and hours teaching a new person how to collar a horse. And what if I didn't, and they put out a wrinkle under their collar pad or a collar too small or too big or something like that, and they got a collar sore. So that's kind of where it starts, but where does it end? Who knows? There's millions of factors from your demeanor to the horse's demeanor. And they are all individuals. Look at these two. Playful, goofy, looking to get into trouble. You know, this will be the third time I hitched this horse in a team, and he's just ready to go to work. Look, let's get this over. This guy just showed me a little bit of disrespect, and we ought to have a talk about that. But, uh, you know, all these adjustments on the harness, all the adjustments in the feed room with the feed scoop, and what you feed, and the hay, and... You know, your your stalls, your pasture, your demeanor when you train them. You know, the halters. Every little detail adds up. Uh, when you go to whatever competition you like, you know, maybe you hate competition, but you go watch a horse pull. You go watch farm classes at your county fair. You go watch the uh, Classic Series 6 Horse Hitch. And whoever wins consistently year after year, I guarantee gets all those details right. You know, I guarantee they have the cleanest horses and the the best nutrition, and, and they do the best job. They do more of those details correctly than any of the rest of us. And uh, I think that's really what separates the wheat from the chaff. Ooh. I've never grown wheat in my life. I should probably say oats from the chaff. We'll see if I can do this without a runaway. Ooh. So attention to detail. I got my lines hanging in the britching. And I have them the same way. So right here, in half a second, I can just get those lines right out. And even if Nick's not here to help, I can uh, control this team. Guess I'm going to pull them ahead, Nick. Again, the key to making yourself the best horseman possible is in the details. There's no secret to it. Continue to work at it, continue to try, and just achieve all those little details, and you will get there, huh? Alright. Uh, we'll go 
over one other point as I back in. Back. Ooh. Not bad for his third time being hooked as a team. Gee. Back. Ooh. Bear in mind, I don't keep anything. That's okay, Nick. I don't keep anything between their rear ends, between their britchens. Uh, I demand that they're trained well enough to back up straight. Um, one way I achieve that is what you saw in those first videos. The first day I hooked this dude, having the tugs up nice and high and he feels them and he, he stays nice and straight in the harness. Hey Nick, how's it going? Fine. Happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> we got Zodiac, Nick. And little Ziggy. This is Ziggy's first time being productive, doing real work. Uh, I think it's his third time being hitched total. And uh, as a team. And we got him on the manure spreader today. Uh, now, point out a couple things. Before we put him on the spreader, I put him on a uh, uh, my log cart with the tire, like you've seen in previous videos. Gave him a lap or two like that, and um, wanted to make sure he was ready for this next step. Uh, be honest, he acted pretty good. I did not think uh, um, going forward there's going to be any issue. Even when I put the spreader in gear, uh, resting could be an issue. And uh, so I, with that tire and the log cart, I headed uphill across the road to a little hill we own over there, and Went uphill and made him stand and, you know, tired him out just a little bit on the tire um, behind the log cart and got everything clicking here. And uh, so now we're ready for him to do some work. Of course, before we can do any work, we got to load the spreader. Nick, because it's your birthday, you got a day off from loading. I'm going to have him wash their heads. Um, I don't trust them to stand yet. I mean, either one of them, they're, they're two and three. And it's uh, the the horse on the near side. It's his third time being hitched. So he's not ready to stand. Um, and I can't get to the lines quick enough. I do have the lines tied up there. That doesn't mean he wouldn't hit the end of them and back up and smash our spreader or something like that. So uh, I guess we're going to load the spreader and uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. As long as the horses are acting good, you know, Nick watched their head for a little bit. Now that they're acting good, he's walking away. Try to get used to that. Try for them to get used to uh, standing like they should without being babysat, without somebody being there. But they're too young to take a chance and really give much freedom. We do have the lines tied here. Uh, but, uh, Nick's right here if anything were to happen, but we don't want them to think every minute of their life somebody's going to watch their head and that's the only time they need to stand. They need to learn standing, but uh, not at the expense of having a runaway either. So we are, I don't know, half loaded and uh, horses are acting pretty good so far. honor of election year we got this pair of colts hooked to a load of political promises everything about election year right there in the spreader we shuffle it around every year and you get to choose the man you blame for all your problems but ziggy on the left on the uh, near side this is his third time being hooked with another horse uh hooked him to the log third day anyway hooked him with a log cart for a while and now he's hooked with his teammate Zodiac. Whoa. Go ahead and jump on there. Whoa. Oh, 
we have here is a pair of uh, three-year-olds. Three on the right, two on the left. Belgian pulling breads. This young horse is off to a nice start. This is his first time doing anything productive, like uh, other than just dragging a tire around or something like that. And he's doing pretty well. You know, a little bumping in and getting used to things. I want you to know, uh, right down here, Ziggy, the two-year-old, is an inch advantage on the eveners. He's an inch further away from center. That means he's uh, pulling on a longer lever, doing less of the work than his brother, who's been doing this kind of stuff for about a year now. They're off to a pretty good start. They're crowding a little bit. Zodi Ziggy there is not quite holding his head exactly where I like. We'll get him over that tomorrow. What we're going to do is switch sides with him. Uh, Zodiac, the roan there on the offside, he's uh, he's used to being worked on either side. Ziggy, in the uh, three times we've hitched him double, has only been hooked on the uh, near side. So tomorrow will be a new challenge for him. I don't expect any issues. In fact, I expect him to overcome issues like walking out. Uh, nice and wide. I'll point out that I worked this team earlier today. Are you looking at the phone and filming? Yeah. I'll point out that I worked this team earlier today. And uh, I knew before I put them on the spreader, it'd be a good idea to exercise them on something that can't go wrong. So I hooked them to the log cart with the tire behind and Oh, I went a mile and a half or something, maybe two miles all told. Uh, just to kind of settle them in. The truth is, uh, until my neighbors fixed the fence that they broke, uh, these horses aren't getting out for as much exercise as they normally do, and they're a little cagey. So, uh, anyway, I, the truth is I went about a mile or so on that log cart, and I didn't like the way they were standing. Everything wasn't just right. And my three-year-old was probably worse than my two-year-old, but uh, I decided it to be a good idea to go another mile and uh, introduce some obstacles and some traffic and stuff. I did all that and they settled down pretty good. I, I particularly didn't like the way they were standing when they were resting on that log cart with the tire. And then I headed them up a hill Made them lean into the tugs and stand, and they did a pretty good job. I, I did that three times going uphill. And uh, when we hooked on here, they just stood patiently like a broke pair of horses. I had Nick there as safety, but they really gave no issues. Stood there like a broke pair of horses while we loaded. Uh, just because they acted that nice doesn't mean they are a broke pair of horses. And don't treat them as such. Don't let go of the lines yet. You know, don't... Uh, don't sit there where they can run off and you're off doing something else. Um, remember that they're colts for a good long time until they've really proven their the, the trust they've earned. Why don't you show them driving as we go around the corner up here, Nick, and then I'll probably have you get off when we spread. Normally, I like a little more gap between their rear ends than they're doing right now. Eveners ne uh, neck yokes are set a little narrower than I like on this cart. But that's right where they need to be for plowing, and they'll go back on the plow as soon as the snow melts. Pretty good job going around the corner for a young boy like that to keep his end up. You know, we don't have a wimpy load on. We got a load back there. If you show it, Nick. We got a, we got a decent sized load behind this team, so you know, it's, it's not going to I can glide right along. What I like about a, what I like about a manure spreader for a young horse, and they're both young horses. Zodiac has done plenty of logging. That he he knows what's up. You know, he knows what time it is. Ziggy, at this is third time being hitched as a team. Uh, all told, I got about two weeks of everything into him since the first time I ever started to train him. And what I like about this, it's going to pull a little hard to start with. Very manageable, 
but he's going to know it's back there. It's going to pull hard. And the longer he goes, the lighter that load will get. That's the nature of a manure spreader. Whoa. Why don't you get ahead of us and watch us uh, coming down through, Sonny? Yeah. Feel free to narrate. They really didn't need a rest there. I just wanted Nick to catch up. Boy, you're slick getting out in there with no hands, Nick. Yeah. Uh, he did really well. First time here in the manure spreader, any piece of equipment behind him and that noise. Might have scared him for half a second, but his trust in me and uh, the relationship we have and me driving on the lines. And he said, ah, Brand's not gonna put me in a bad spot and drove off. We're gonna start him and I want you to watch uh, they have to pull a little bit. The colt was, I don't know if the colt was behind so much as the three-year-old was uh, ahead there. I mean, they're not really pulling, not like hitched to a log or a stone boat or something, but they certainly got to pay attention to what they're doing here, and I like it. Acting good. Show the spreader if you wouldn't. If you look, that spreader's doing a good job. Spread nice and even, not throwing off things in clumps. And that's gonna become more important to us because uh, hopefully the snow's gonna melt and the weather's gonna warm up in about less than a week and we'll be finishing plowing this corn stubble. And uh, I don't want a lot of wads in there, big chunks of hay and stuff like that that we have to spread. Or I mean plow over, that'll, that'll plug our plow. I just dropped that table chain, apron chain, some people call it. I just sped that up a little bit. So here you notice, Zodiac was a step, Ziggy was a step behind. I slid all the way over here on his side and that evened him up on the evener. Right about now that colt's getting tired, but like Nick just showed, right back there, that load's getting less and less all the time. So the colt gets more tired and the spreader gets more empty. Kind of a good way to start a young pulling prospect, actually. Good, good young horse of any kind, really. So uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna turn this steam here when the, we get a little more shit out of the spreader. And I want you guys to focus on that tongue in those heel chains and how low they are and how it cuts the horse's legs a little bit going around the corner. And that's why I try to keep them on a cart or something uh, with a higher hitch point, a higher tongue. No, he's smart. He let it touch his leg about once and he knows right where that is. But he's also had, I don't know, eight miles on the on the log card already. And so he knows the, the, the higher tongue has already uh, been a part of his training. So now I'll shut the beaters off. I'll shut that off. The apron chain, table chain, we always called it. I'm gonna sit back in the middle. I think sitting off to one side doesn't do much for them crowding. I like them walk a little wider than what they are. But 
we're off to a nice start. What do you say we go uh, get another load of election year promises and call it a day and do something fun for your birthday after that, Nick? Sounds good to me. All right, folks. I appreciate everybody watching this channel. Uh, keep watching. We're going to do a lot more fun things. Um, we're going to get some merchandise to sell. We're going to have some unique stuff, stuff you don't see every day. And uh, I'd like to spread it around a little bit. It'd be kind of cool to see it out there a little bit and share the fun with everybody. Uh, make sure you subscribe. That helps us along a lot. And uh, and keep watching for the fun stuff we do moving ahead. I think as, uh, as the snow melts and spring gets here, you're going to see a lot more fun stuff than, uh, than just what we usually do. Thanks a lot, folks. gonna back this spreader into the shed where we keep it one reason I'm not afraid to do it well one reason is I've screwed a lot of stuff up if I screw this up it won't be the end of the world I'm not afraid to fail but another reason they've been working uh, they went two miles on a log cart with a tire behind it and then they spread two loads of manure so back whoa whoa they might be settled in a little. Jeez. One command at a time. Whoa. So I turn them and then I stop them. Boy, they are dancing. Whoa. Gee. Paracolts. Whoa. I don't try to turn my teams and back them at the same time. I do one command at a time doing that. G. Whoa. And I keep the whip handy and just touch them if they back up a little too fast. Back. Back. Whoa. How's your editing skills, Nick? All right. If there's a big crash or we run something over, can you edit that out? Yeah. <laughs> Back. 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 And I want to crowd that wall there. It gives us more space in the garage. Back. Back. Whoa. Ah. Uh, uh, that's a good job for a young colt to haw like that. Haw. Uh, haw. Uh, haw. Uh, woo. Back. What about a foot? Yeah. Back. Woo. That's good. G. Woo. G. Woo. Not bad. Ooh. Oh, not really. Pretty happy with that young colt so far. Well, that's my advice for backing up. I don't know why I keep doing this. I'm like a politician as much as I pick on them. I, I got to have my hand motions. We will not raise taxes. And then they do. Because that, that's how you get votes. You, you spend money on stuff. That gets votes. But that's how taxes get raised also. Uh, I don't know why we're on a political rant here. I hate all politicians, both sides of the party. There I go, doing my political hand thing. <laughs> what office should I run for, Nick? Independent. <laughs> like Robert. Yeah. Uh, anyway, my advice, and I'm probably going to keep waving my hand and not distracting myself. One command at a time. And, and take your time when you're backing a team up. So it's back, and they'll back a step, whoa, and if they, they take an extra step, touch them with the whip. 
Don't maul them, just touch them. Not even as hard as you'd hit a fly. They know what's up. And uh, and then when you turn, you're, you're stopped, and then you haw, and you turn, and stop again. You, you stop and G, you don't, I try not to do two commands at one time, going backwards. Going forward, I do. Hell yeah, they better know how to go forward and turn at the same time. But even my older teams, I don't really ask them to, to back up and turn at the same time. Um, that's kind of my advice for getting a team to back up, at least starting them that way. Uh, you know, in a lot of, I don't think they do it much anymore, but it used to be something called fanning horses we had to do when we showed horses a little bit on a wagon. And uh, what we do, we stop the team or the tandem or whatever we were driving, and they'd have us fan the team. You'd haw to the left a good long ways, and then you'd G all the way to the right. And they would want that front wheel to turn without the back wheels turning. And uh, if you could do that without brakes on the rear, so much the better. And uh, that's kind of what you want to shoot for. That's, that's not a bad practice to have for a farm horse either. That's kind of what you want to shoot for as you back a team up, uh, a young team or any team on the wagon. Um, and a good place to teach them that is a cart like this or my log cart or something like that. And put something decent behind it, a tire, a uh, set of drags out in the field. And... Um, They'd rather turn when you tell them than pull that forward, and they kind of learn that, and they get to fanning good, and that'll improve your accuracy on backing up. I guess that's about my tips for backing up. We're going to unhook and back them in the barn, and hopefully you'll see them do a little better job backing in the barn than they did a few hours ago when they were fresh. that this team especially this guy deserve a kiss for what a good job they did today